the Facebook ads pixel is kind of the gateway to making sure that we can make the most of our Facebook ads campaigns. If you want anybody to do any actions outside of Facebook, not liking your page or engaging with your posts, but if you're going to send people to your website, you should absolutely always install the Facebook pixel on your website. So today we're going to jump in and talk about how to create the pixel and then how to install it on your website. In your Facebook ads account, we want to hop up into the main menu, go to all tools. And then in the old interface, there will be a events manager listing and then pixels in the new Facebook ads manager. It will just say events manager. So click on that and head there. But since we're still seeing the old one, I'm just going to click directly to pixels. You can then see that this account does not have a Facebook pixel created yet. So there's going to be a huge section here in the middle that prompts you to create a Facebook pixel. If you already have a pixel and you just want to add a second one for a different website, a different business for any reason, you can come over here and click the add new data source button and it'll let you choose from Facebook pixel, offline event set or app events. But for today, we want to run just with this create a pixel option. It'll then ask you to choose a name for your pixel, which the default one that it's choosing is just fine by me. You can also check your website for easy setup options. I'm going to skip that and we're going to do the more elongated version. Click continue. And then Facebook will give you three options of how you can add your pixel to your website. It's already created the pixel in the background. You can see over here kind of grayed out that it says the status is active, just waiting for the first event. So now it's asking us to actually add the pixel to the website in a number of different ways. The first is to add a code through a partner integration. So if we click on that, you can then choose from a list of predetermined partners of how you want to add your base pixel to your website, either through HubSpot, Google Tag Manager, Shopify, you can scroll down to WordPress. If you don't see a partner that you want, you can click the request a new partner piece. But for the time being, let's go look back at the other options of how we can add our pixel to our website. The third option in here is going to be by far the easiest for anybody who actually has the option to use it. And it's email your instructions to a developer. If you have a developer, if somebody in your company, a friend of yours, if you work with an agency, whoever it is, and somebody else is the person who's making the actual event and pixel changes to your website, all you have to do is click this third option. It'll then open up this window here in this top field, just type in the email address of your developer, the person that you want to actually install the pixel. It will then show you all of the instructions that it's going to send them. All of this is exactly what you need to actually get your pixel on your website. Once you're finished with that, you'll just click send down here and it'll automatically email them everything that they need to know to install the pixel for you. The most basic way and the way that we used to have to do it back in the day was this section option here, which is manually add pixel code to the website. So we'll click on that one and it'll bring up this section that looks really similar to what the email option was that we just talked about. Effectively hover over this field here and it's going to say copy code to clipboard. Just click it and it'll highlight in green. And now it's copied to the clipboard so we can easily paste it into a field someplace later. I do want to talk about the components of this pixel just a little bit because you can customize it for different events. And we'll talk about that in a later video, but this whole code here from Facebook pixel code all the way down to the bottom of end pixel code is what you need to have intact exactly how it is here on your website. All of this basically communicates with Facebook. You'll then see there is going to be a section here in the middle that has your account ID. I'm sorry we blurred it out, but you don't need to know what that is. And then you'll see this FBQ track page view. Effectively, that means that every time somebody goes to any page on your website, it's going to fire a page view event. And that's how you know it's operating properly. If we scroll down a little bit in the second option, it's going to say, turn on automatic advanced matching, leave this toggled on. You only need to turn it off if you're really concerned about user privacy, that sort of thing. But honestly, everything is anonymized. What this does is it allows Facebook to fill in the gaps of the tracking that it gets off of different users based on previous interactions they've had with your business. Again, it's all anonymized. It basically just helps us make sure that our audiences conversion tracking, any of the time people fire the code on our website has less holes in the data. So just leave this one toggled on at all times if you can. In this third option down here, once we've actually installed the base pixel on our website, which we're going to do here in just a second, you can come back to this field and enter your website URL. Then you can click this send test traffic button and Facebook will open up in a new tab in your browser, 
the web page that you just typed into that field to let it test and make sure that that page view event is being triggered and that your base pixel is functioning properly. Right now, like we can see that it says no activity yet, and we already talked about waiting for first event up here. Once that has fired, this will automatically change to active and you'll see a list of the different events that have already fired. Lastly, if you clicked on the second option and you got all the way down to the bottom and then you were too intimidated to figure out how to set this up, you actually can come down here and click email instructions and it effectively takes you back to that second option if you want to back out. The last thing I want to show you how to do is how to add your base pixel in Google Tag Manager and what the different triggers are that you need to have in place. So within Google Tag Manager, you effectively need to just come over to tags, click new. We can give the tag a name up here at the top. I'm just going to name it Facebook Pixel. Then click on Tag Configuration. And over here on the right, it'll show you the different featured tag types that you can use. There are usually different integrations that you can have here. And we already saw in Facebook that we can add it directly to Google Tag Manager. But from the Tag Manager side, there's not a Facebook default action. So we need to use custom HTML. And then since we already copied that code to the clipboard, we can then paste and it shows up intact exactly how it needs to be. And then come down to triggering. And we need to have this trigger on all pages to make sure that we're following users as they engage with any action on our website. If they view the home page and then seven or eight other pages and then eventually convert, we need to make sure that the pixel is on all of those pages so we can know what pages they visited. But then if they do convert and when you want to use Facebook conversion tracking, if there was a gap in the middle and one of those pages didn't have it, we're likely not going to track that conversion back to that initial home page visit. So make sure your Facebook pixel is firing on all pages of your website. Click Save, and then we'll hit Submit and publish the new tag and trigger to the website. Now I just want to show you what the process looks like of adding your base pixel to Google Tag Manager through the Facebook side because it's a little bit different, but I want you to know what to expect. So if we click the Add Code Using a Partner Integration, we then choose Google Tag Manager. It will then ask about automatic events. Just click Continue. This is where we get back to that automatic advanced matching. Again, leave that on if you can. Click Continue. It will then open up a window with all of the Google accounts you currently have access to. So click the one that has access to the Google Tag Manager account that you want to use. It will then ask you to grant access for Facebook to publish your Tag Manager container views, manage your container views, and manage your subcomponents and all of the different pieces within it. So just scroll down and click Allow. It will then ask you to choose which account you want to use within that Google Tag Manager account. So if you have access to a number of different containers, make sure you choose the right one. Then choose the container that you want to use and click Finish Setup. It will then ask about setting up events using a setup tool. We're not going to talk about that today. That will be a different video. So just click Continue. And now you're all done. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos.